Good, good morning. morning, YouTube. Good morning, YouTube. Good to have you with us today. Right here, right here for another in the series of one hour of faith and communion. We're glad to have you with us here today. Today is going to be a, we've been teaching a series about name your seed, but today we're going to uh, listen to a couple of broadcasts about what's going on in Israel right now. And so that's going to be our program today. We welcome you. We're going to hear a good word from George and Gloria, from Brother uh, Tan, or, uh, Amir Sarfati, and talk a little bit about the word of God. And we we rejoice in the fact that whether or not the world is standing with Israel, never again, never again will God ever remove his hand from Israel. Never again. Never again. That's a awesome to see. So that's our program for today. Welcome, welcome. Hopefully you got a beautiful day like we do. It is a beautiful day in North Dakota. And uh, yesterday we were at the um, something at the Capitol. What would you call it? Call to the Capitals and leave our call, kids alone. Call to the Capitol and leave our kids alone. Yeah, it was to turn our nation back to God was, was their title, I believe. And then there was also a woman's movement there. But, but not the. Uh, uh, anyways, not the radical feminists. This bunch of women that's going to Washington D.C. A million women on October twelfth are going to be in Washington C C D, Washington D.C. on the Mall, praying for America, and. Standing in an Esther anointing to see this nation saved. And if you're a woman, get connected and be a part. Watch God do a mighty, mighty, mighty work in Jesus' mighty name. Well, our first message we're going to hear today is from Brother Ke uh, from Brother Copeland's news network which is victory news and then george and gloria is going to be on there talking to us and that's going to be great if for some reason we lose signal come and find us on zoom if the youtube channel doesn't stay please learn to follow us on zoom because there's so much more we can do over there in jesus mighty name with that being said here we go Victory News talking about last night's attack from Iran on Israel. Sister Leanne's in the studio. I'm in the semi. So today you get in the studio and semi. Here we go. All right, here we go. An unknown number of cruise missiles at the nation of Israel. The first report of the attacks came in about two to three hours ago. According to ABC News, United States officials believe Iran will also be launching upwards of 500 drones and missiles, possibly from Yemen, Iraq, Lebanon, and Syria. Some of the drones were expected to take up to two hours or more to reach Israeli airspace and are believed to be destined for military targets. The attack comes after the Iranian Supreme Leader said he would punish Israel for attacking the Iranian consulate in Syria earlier this month. A number of senior members of the Iranian military were killed in that attack. Now, according to reports, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has stated the Jewish state is ready for a direct attack and pledged a strong response. President Joe Biden returned to the White House earlier today from his beach house in Delaware to address the situation, reaffirming U.S. support for Israel's defense 
against Iranian threats. Now, Reuters is reporting U.S. military has shot down at least one Iranian drone that was heading for Israel. And in the last 20 minutes, the Times of Israel reports that Jordanian jets have shot down dozens of Iranian drones. We're also hearing that the Iranian defense minister says his country will strongly retaliate against any nation that allows its airspace or territory to be used for an attack on Iran by Israel. And right now, you may be wondering, what should I do? What can I do? Let's hear from the pastors of Eagle Mountain International Church, George and Terry Pearsons. Pastors, this is a troublesome and, and really vexing time. You and your congregation have consistently shown support for Israel based on what the Bible says. Help us understand how and why believers in Jesus Christ should be focused and praying at this moment. Yeah, thank you, Mike. We're so glad we can join you for this time. In a few moments, we're going to be praying over this, but we're looking at this in a little bit different light. We are in the middle of prophetic times, the end times are here. Welcome. Yeah, <laughs> it's really the truth. And so on one hand, we don't make light of the seriousness of the hour right. because people and their lives and the land and so much is going on. Uh, and, and this is only a part of an ongoing cascade of troublesome things that will continue to unfold. Jesus said that it would happen that way. But on the other hand, we can't help but say, grab your Bible That's and right. a box of spiritual popcorn because, brother, we're, the show has begun. Right. Now, whether or not what we're seeing today is a direct uh, connection to further prophecy, Ezekiel 38 and 39, other things coming together as Jesus said that they would, along with other prophecies, of course, throughout both Old and New Testament. Whether or not that means things will unfold tomorrow, next week, in a few months, in a few years, we do know that what's happening right now is moving us forward. Time doesn't just move along based on the day and the hour, but it also moves along based on events. Events tend to <clears throat> catapult up right. to the next event. So we're very excited in that sense because in all of this, it's God... God is doing all this time and again. He says these things, will, they have to happen, but it will be so that the nations will know. Right. Talk about a wake-up call for everybody. That's what this is all about. Yeah, and it's so good that we can come together because we have friends that we've worked with for many years in Israel that we've been standing with. Of course, Kenneth Copeland Ministries, the Victory Channel, Eagle Mountain International Church. We stand for Israel. We stand with Israel 100%. And as we come together today in, in faith, uh, looking at this, it says in Matthew 18, 19, again, I say unto you that any two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask. It it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And so we're believing with our friends right now who are there, standing with them, but also seeing from that high perspective of what God is doing. He is mighty in battle. <laughs> he is. I tell you, we wouldn't want to be on the other side right now. Now, many of you have heard us talk about Zev Ornstein. He is our close friend but also our partner in that he is the spokesperson for the city of David. And we have worked with Zev over these last several years and become very fast friends. He's spoken in our church, ministered to us, and we're so thankful for, for him. He gives us great insight along the way. I just love listening to his, his insight. But he sent something to me a, a, uh, about an hour or so ago, and I, I just think that you would want to hear this. It says, Shalom, my friend. Hashem, that means that's God's name. Uh, it's Hebrew. It means uh, the name. And so speaking about the Lord, Hashem is definitely moving the pieces around on his chessboard upstairs. <laughs> we may wake up to a very different world, though I don't think we will be sleeping tonight. On that night, this is from Esther chapter 6, verse 1. On that night, the king could not sleep, and he gave orders to bring the book of memorable deeds, the chronicles, and they were read before the king. <laughs> Jewish tradition teaches that any time in the book of Esther the word king appears, it's referring to God. So on this night, just as on that night in the book of Esther, the guardian of Israel will neither, neither sleep nor slumber. And I love this, this verse. It says he gave 
orders to bring the book of memorable deeds. Bring it before the king. And that's what we're doing. We are yes. bringing the yes. word of God before the king. God said, call me into remembrance. Not that he forgot, not that he's losing his memory, but he says, call his word to remembrance, meaning for us to remember. It's a covenant call to remember his word together with him because what he says, we say. And we say Israel will prevail. That's right. We say the That's nations right. will see that there is a God in Israel, the yes. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that God. And it will be the wake-up call that the world, uh, the, the, a series of wake-up right. calls has begun for them to recognize the power of the Almighty God and His covenant, covenant with Israel, His covenant with the church, and He's a covenant-keeping God. And God calls Israel my people. Those are my people, he says. And what about the people that are around them? What about Iran? What about all these nations that are set against them? Well, the Bible is clear in Isaiah 40, verse 15 through 17. Behold, the nations are like a drop from a bucket and are counted as small dust on the scales. Behold, he takes up the islands like a little thing. And all Lebanon's forests cannot supply sufficient fuel, nor its wild beasts furnish victims enough to burn sacrifices worthy of the Lord. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are regarded by him as less than nothing and emptiness. So that includes all the nations that are protesting Israel and all the right. nations that are standing against Israel. This is a wake up call for them. They better wake up or they will experience the judgment of God. You may want to look at Ezekiel 38 and 39 and it doesn't take a whole lot of research to just search on the internet the ancient names and see where they are now. And you'll see that they are the names of the players that are involved, which is primarily Iran, Turkey, Israel, uh, excuse me, uh, Iran, Iran, Turkey, and Russia. Get it right, Terry. And those are the main countries that you'll see involved others, of course, as well. And it even speaks of other countries like Jordan that are involved, but as as not real players. They're the ones that are saying, hmm, Iran, what are you doing? Hmm, but they don't really step in. Yeah. And that's because God is making room for him to step in. Right. And even as we pray right now for Israel, we pray for our Watch. friends, we yes. lift up our the friends and who all they, uh, they represent, hey. what they represent to us, then know this, that that same God who does not sleep nor slumber, his eye is on Israel, his eye is on you, his eye is on America. And we stand in faith because the probability that times are unfolding for this nation as well is very high. Let me read this from the 91st Psalm, and then if you'd go ahead and begin to pray, and we'll be in okay. agreement together. And this is what we're standing on. We're standing on for the state of Israel, for our friends who are there, and for all of us together in Psalm 91. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver Israel from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence and he'll cover Israel with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust his truth shall be their shield and buckler the Hebrew says a circle of protection they shall not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flies by day so we stand in agreement <laughs> well, together that over that right now tonight. that does it really does that's a picture of what's happening in Israel right now uh, conflicting information conflicting reports but we know that there are, are hundreds, maybe even thousands of drones that are coming in and rockets also still being fired from countries around Israel. But uh, glory to God, glory to God, and watch what God does. There shall no evil before, evil before them, neither shall any plague come near their dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over them to keep them in all their ways. They shall bear them up in their hands, lest they dash their foot against a stone. Amen.
So let's pray. Thank and you. As Lord. I call out these names, these are the names of the people you may recognize. Most Thank of them you, Jesus. have been in our church at one time or another. Lord, and so I'll pray as them, but all the people they represent and the areas because they're in all different parts of Israel. Father, in the Thank name you, of the Jesus. Lord Jesus, Praise we pray. Lord, we pray Lord, together Lord, corporately. Lord, as a church, as a body of believers, Lord, we are we are the victory channel. Thank you, Jesus. We this victory. is the victory that overcomes right. the world, even, even our, our faith. faith. Thank you, this Lord. is the victory that overcomes the enemies of God. This is the victory you, that Lord. overcomes Israel's Thank enemy. You, this is the victory that overcomes even our faith. Yes. Our faith in you, our faith in your faithfulness, Thank our you, faith in, in your word, Thank you, our Jesus. faith in the covenant, and we are thrilled, Lord, Thank to you, stand Lord. before oh, you in Shabbat faith, Shabbat knowing that our God Shabbat has Shabbat. got this, yes, and that you, our Jesus. faith in you, knowing you Praise are faithful, God. and you are watching yes, over are. them. Yes, Lord, we are. pray for the people of Israel, that their peace of mind, oh, Shabbat, and that their Shabbat, hearts Shabbat, be Shabbat, secure, Shabbat, and that they, they, they have a, a, an arising Shabbat, of confidence and the awakening within them, Praise Lord, that, that they can know and trust you, asking for a supernatural blanket of peace. Yes. over the whole yes. nation, Thank you, Lord, Lord, as you do battle for them. Thank you, Jesus. We're so thankful for that. <laughs> Lord, we pray over Zev and his family. We pray, Thank Lord, you. over Sam and over Shmulek and over you. their families. We pray over the city of David. We pray over Praise Jerusalem. We you, pray Jesus. over Tel Aviv. We pray, yes. Lord, over Ronnie, our friend Ronnie, and those that are in Thank uniform you, and, and protecting other areas around the country of Israel. Praise we pray for Yossi. We pray for the, the Wallers. We pray for Jeremy Gimpel. We yes. pray for those all through Judea and Samaria. <laughs> Thank and Lord, you, Lord, those that have stepped Thank out and father. said, we will do what the Lord our God has commanded Praise us. God. He said, inhabit the mountains of Israel and we will and they have. Thank you, Father, Praise that they God. have the protection of the Holy One of Israel Thank is you, watching Jesus. over them to keep them Praise as God. they look to you and they trust That's you. That's right. Lord, we pray over the command. You, we Jesus. pray over the prime minister. Mm. We pray over the cabinet. We pray over the military. We pray over every general and Thank captain. You, we pray over uh, the, the Air Force. We pray over the United States That's right. and Great That's right. Britain and all of those, France right. and all of those who are we participating stand. in this. We stand. We stand. Thank you, Father, and we, we ask you we to stand. to bless those that have come Thank alongside you, Israel in all this, and that your mercy be upon our nations Praise as God. this dark enemy raises its head like never before. Thank you. Father. Thank you, Father, for the power of angels, the power of your Praise word, God. the power of your name, Thank you. the power of the covenant, Lord, to do yes. what only you can do. We are so thankful, Lord, that we Thank can you, trust Father. you. We look Thank to you, you and we have expectation of the miraculous, Woo. expectation you, of demonstration you, of our covenant making, covenant keeping God. Praise we God. love you, Lord. Thank and we're you, excited. We say, go, God, go, Praise Hashem, God. go, Thank go, you, go. Do what it is only Thank you, you can do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Bless the Lord. Praise God. Amen and amen. 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 If this room was big enough, I'd run around it. But we keep praying. Yeah. Those of you that, that do pray in the Holy Spirit, and tomorrow pray morning, in faith. Remember, and don't forget about church. That's right. Being a part with us there. We're going to be dealing with some, tomorrow morning at church, 10 o'clock Central Time, Eagle Mountain International Church on the Victory Channel. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mike. Larry, thank you so much. We needed that. Victory News will monitor the situation and bring you updates as warranted. Be sure to join us tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 Central, as Pastor George just said. Thank you. This is Mike Garofalo on the Victory News. There you go. Now I'm unmuted. Sister Leanne will get us to the next one. What's interesting is after everything they said and prayed, that's exactly what God did throughout the night for Israel. And we'll get ready to hear that from Brother Amir Sarfati, right? <clears throat> yes.
Whenever you're ready. And we're now. Uh, it'll pop up here. I'll quit talking when it does. Um, Amir, if you're not friends with Amir, go to Telegram. And it's an app. Download it. And then he keeps you updated every day, all day long. That's interesting. Did you disappear or did I? I'm still No, here. I believe I did. I was trying to swipe up to start the program and I seem to have disconnected myself. So I'm reconnecting right, right. now. Yes, all right, we that's cool. Um, so Amir Safadi is, he lives, um, what did he say? He lives two miles from the road to Emmaus where Jesus walked with the disciples. That's where he lives in the nation of Israel. He was the um, governor of Jericho, and he served in the IDF, the International uh, Israel's Defense Force, and was a major. And so he's a very, very uh, high-level information that you get from Amir, and he's a born-again, spirit-filled, messianic Jew. Here we go. This is yes, from shalom, last everyone. night. This is Amir Tzofati live from Galilee. I, the internet is not good for so many reasons. I'm going to try again. I'm trying again to uh, broadcast from the backyard, and you're going to hear a lot of F 16s taking off and landing. Guys, uh, these are breaking news. Israel is under attack from Iran right now. Nearly 100 suicide drones are on the way to Israel. It takes hours to fly from Iran to Leb to Israel, and um, we are uh, expecting the first uh, drones to uh, arrive around five hours from now. So. So the Israelis have time to prepare, but um, let me run you through everything, okay? First of all, the Iranians made a big mistake. They actually launched whatever they wanted to launch from their own soil. This is their way to say you attacked an embassy which is considered our soil we will attack yours. Um, second, uh, we know that Iran closed its airspace for 10 days. They just announced 10 days, which means they understand that this is not going to be a few hours deal. They understand that there's a good chance Israel will have to respond. By the way, I'm extremely extremely satisfied and happy and I tell you why because it's time to deal with the head of the snake okay so now Israel's airspace will be closed soon at 1 a.m. which is close you know three hours before the the, the drones will arrive um, Jordan's airspace is already closed Therefore, passenger planes that were flying from Dubai to Israel via Jordan had to turn around and fly back. The Israeli Prime Minister's plane, Zion's Wing, that's the name of our Air Force One, took off. It took off from its base in the southern part of Israel in case the base will be attacked. We really don't want that plane to get uh, damaged. So for the first time, uh, the Air Force One of Israel is now flying in the air rather than, and it's empty without any official in it. Uh, but that's, of course, to protect it from getting damaged and hurt or destroyed. We in Israel, <clears throat> we're not afraid because we have uh, multi layers of defense that no other country around us. Uh, has we were talking about short range mid medium long range 
we have laser, we have uh, uh, capabilities from the sea, from the air, from the ground. We are able to take down those drones, make no mistake. And not only that, we're able, these are big drones because drones that, are, that have to fly thousands of kilometers are, cannot be small ones. They have to carry a lot of uh, fuel and a payload of explosives so they have to be big and once they're big they can be easily detected so the Israeli Air Force is now scrambling we are estimating uh, roughly 50 uh, fighter jets that will have to engage in in this thing and the reason why I'm saying 50 is because we have other things that we're doing right now. We're attacking in southern Lebanon, Hezbollah outpost. We're attacking in Gaza, Hamas outpost. And now we're dealing with this threat as well. So um, we do not want all of our air force to be focusing only on one thing. We have a lot to do. Again, we're estimating around 100 drones that have been already detected as they were launched and seen by people over Iraq already. Uh, by the way, if you are not um, on Telegram, you're missing the whole thing. I've been, I've been reporting on this for a couple hours now with videos, with maps, with facts, with everything. The Prime Minister of Israel, the minute we knew that the, the drones were already on the way, he uh, appeared on TV and said that Israel is ready and we will know how to not only defend ourselves, but also uh, strike back. Israel is, of course, enjoying international support. And that is not because they love the Jews so much as they are afraid of the prices of oil to uh, skyrocket and the Middle East to turn into uh, the beginning of World War Three and and that, of course, will hurt economies around the world. So basically, folks, the U.S. president cut short his, his uh, vacation, came back to the White House. Um, the prime minister and his cabinet in Israel are meeting not above the ground, where they're meeting right now under the ground in a secret um, headquarters uh, that is under the ground in Tel Aviv. The ministers were informed that it's not going to be in the regular conference room of the prime minister's office in Tel Aviv, but it's going to be this time under the ground. Um, the Israeli uh, public was informed that uh, starting from tomorrow morning, uh, there will be no uh, activities outdoors for uh, the uh, education uh, sector. So there is there's no camps for Passover. There's no a school, there's no kindergarten, and there's not, no uh, field trips in the country. All the beaches along the Mediterranean and around the Sea of Galilee, as well as the Red Sea, were closed. No one can even go to the beaches. And all of that is in order for no one to get hurt in case one of those drones manages to penetrate the Israeli defense air defense system and explode somewhere. Um, so basically, again, Israel is under attack, but it's funny because we're, so here we are, we know that there's about 100 explosive drones on their way. They're flying right now. I mean, for, for the next few hours, they'll be flying towards us. So we all know about them. They're flying. They, they sound weird. If you go to my telegram, you'll see how weird the sound of them. I mean, we, we can see videos of them flying. We can hear them flying. They're much slower than a, than a jet. And it takes for, you know, a passenger jet a few hours to fly. So you can imagine how, how much longer it will take to these. So those drones are on their way. Um, Based on the Israeli response, I believe that the Iranians will uh, up their game and, and maybe add to it cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, and if so, they might even order Hezbollah and their militias in Iran, in Iraq and Syria to also engage. The U.S. Uh, has uh, the cape. The U.S. alone has enough 
aircrafts here and enough uh, power here in the middle, middle east that is 10 times the power of iran i'm not even talking about israel i'm talking about just the u.s forces in the area so the iranians understand that they're taking a risk here they're gambling and uh, in case something is going to happen and strategic uh, military installations are going to get hurt or attacked Israel is definitely going to um, use the opportunity, seize the moment, which is, if you go to my telegram, I wrote a short message on why it is actually the best thing. Finally, we can address the head of the snake and do something. We have all the legitimacy to do so. So, um, and we have the international uh, support on uh, you know with us right now because everybody understands you know it's easy to fall into the trap of feeling sorry for the Palestinians and so give them food give them aid give them this give them that but but everybody understands when it comes to the Ayatollahs you know this is not something okay so what you're gonna hear shortly is not only takeoffs but also landings of those that took off early, uh, you know, a few minutes ago. And um, this is it, folks. Israel is under attack. But, <laughs> again, why am I outside? Why can I just, uh, you know, do this right now, this video? And why am I not locked up in a bomb shelter? Because <laughs> the uh, UAVs took off a couple hours ago. And it takes at least five more hours to reach this place. So we are estimating again 4 a.m. the time for the first ones to arrive. But again, we're aiming, our entire family is going to stay up all night, of course. I think every family in Israel is going to stay up, up all night. But our, uh, we're aiming to shoot down those drones, not in Israel but outside. So uh, the aim is to, of course, to do it. Um, again, as I said, Israel is considering few options. One of the options I read about today is uh, electromagnetic uh, weapon to be used above Iran and to seize the moment to go after their nuclear sites, which are at least 15 sites. Uh, of which five are critical for their program. Iran has enough uranium for bombs, for at least 10 bombs already. It's not, we passed that one. They, they already have the uh, uranium. They haven't assembled the bomb yet. And you can imagine, look, you can imagine what would this video be if Iran was already in nuclear power? What would the world look like if now it's a nuclear Iran. Nobody can accept that. So um, this is what we're about to do. Um, again, Israel has all of its military on its highest alert. You missed the takeoff of at least 20 to 30 F-16s when I was having the first attempt to go live. Um, in a few minutes, some of them will return. They're patrolling because, again, their job is to detect those UAVs and destroy them and shoot them down before they even enter Israel. Um, the Israeli cabinet is convening in an hour. Again, <laughs> it sounds like we're taking our time. Yeah, those F-16s are returning back to base. It sounds like we're taking our time. Like, why would you convene in an hour, an hour and a half? But it's because, again, there's a hundred drones on their way to Israel, and it'll take them five more hours to go uh, to arrive, and and that's it. I don't know if you can hear. But they're coming back to the base right now. So this is the situation right now. We're under attack, but it's not yet here. Um, the nature 
of the Israeli response will determine if our enemies will try it again or learn their lesson. If we will do nothing, and by the way, this is where I'm a little bit afraid that America will push us to do the wrong thing. The Americans don't want us to retaliate. They, they didn't even want us to go into Gaza. And I don't think any sovereign country can accept the fact that a country that has no border with it even uh, launches 100 suicide drones in uh, aiming at its uh, military bases. It's unacceptable. I think Israel has to be very strongly uh, standing on the firm right to strike back and to make sure the Ayatollahs pay for it. So it's going to be an interesting night, more so an interesting week ahead of us. Again, the Iranians kind of anticipated that it's going to take time. They issued a NOTAM, uh, which is a no-flight um, um, zone announcement to pilots and, and, and airlines. And they actually issued it from the 13th of April today to the 23rd of April. They, they already understand that there's a, it's going to be a 10 days of possible exchange of uh, fire. And the airspace of Iran is closed, basically. Israel is closing its airspace within an hour and a half. Jordan already closed its airspace. Um, Again, all the beaches are closed. The Israeli uh, public is ordered not to gather more than a thousand people in within the country and not to gather at all when you're close to Lebanon and Gaza. And uh, the education system uh, canceled all activities tomorrow. So all kids are staying home. And uh, so the Ayatollahs have to deal with angry moms in Israel. But anyway, look, I'm, I'm encouraged. I'm not afraid. I'm not depressed. I'm actually, I mean, to, to be honest, finally, we have a chance to deal with the Ayatollahs. And I think that this is historic. I think that this is, it has never happened before. I mean, I, I don't remember when Iran directly sent anything towards Israel. And so this is our chance to do what we need to do. And I truly hope and pray that our leaders will not do the wrong thing and will do the right thing. A lot is at stake right now. So we need your prayers. Of course, we do need your prayers. But if I come across panicky or stressful, not at all. We are, we feel great. Um, and again, Iran is no longer is watching from the side. Iran is no longer in a peanut gallery. Iran is no longer a spectator that is just uh, enjoying the fight. But, you know, Iran is now a player and an active one. And Iran has to uh, pay and also get hit as part of the game. So Pray for Prime Minister Netanyahu for wisdom. Pray for the cabinet and for the military for wisdom and for protection. Pray that we will not succumb to any pressure not to retaliate. And pray that the nation of Israel will unite. These inner divisions are just the thing that the enemy wants. And I don't think we can afford one now. So, yeah. Um, I might not have internet. Uh, there's extreme GPS disruptions uh, all around. Um, in fact, uh, all Arab countries around us, whether it's Syria and Lebanon, <clears throat> Iraq, Iran, and Egypt, they all report serious disruption of GPS. And so they, they, they can hardly fly. There will be maybe serious disruption with also um, satellite signals or and maybe even internet so you know i i am on telegram telegram is my go-to platform and if you want to know what is going on this is where you need to be elsewhere i cannot say things because i'm being censored and it's not going to happen
Um, so, yeah, in one hour, the airspace of Israel will be completely sealed up. And anything that flies that is not an Israeli fighter jet or helicopter will be shut down. So if you're planning on flying your airplane to Israel in the near f next few hours, just as I'm going to say it like Biden does, don't. Look, uh, again, pray for us. We need prayers, but we also, again, we need the world to let us do what we need to do and what we have to do. This is the Middle East, and uh, you cannot show weakness. You cannot project that you are okay with a hundred drones flying towards you. There is no such thing. So uh, pray that uh, the leaders will do the right thing. And uh, personally, I mean, our family would love prayers because uh, as of tomorrow, we might have three family members in active duty. So we, we, need, um, we need prayer as well. All right. So thank you. Have a great Sunday tomorrow, all of you. While, while you sleep at night or while you're about to go to sleep in America, uh, those UAVs are supposed to arrive here. Again, it's f uh, we're talking about 4 a.m., anything between 4 and 5. They've been flying a few hours already. So I'll keep you posted. Again, I hope there will be Internet to be able to do that. But Telegram is where you need to be. Download Telegram, find my channel. I have over half a million subscribers. It's very easy. Amir Tsafati or the name of the channel is Behold Israel Channel, one word. Go, I'll see you there in a few minutes and I'll continue to update you there. And please press the share button right now and pray for That ended kind of abruptly. <laughs> I did not do that. <clears throat> but here I will get the next. Oops. I want to everybody to notice that he uh, he's not in, in the least amount freaked out in what he was saying to us. Yeah, not at all. And... I forget, over 400 different military projectile devices were sent toward them. And the news today is they, they've shot down 99% of them. One did hit a village somewhere and wounded uh, a 10-year-old boy. And we call that young man healed in Jesus' mighty name. Father, raise him up, whatever the effect on his body was raise him up make him strong right in the face of this foolishness and as amir said to pray give the greatest resolve to to prime minister netanyahu and all of that staff in jesus mighty name are we ready we're ready who's that Who's this? This is CBN. I think right. this is today, is it? Here we go. Here we go. And uh, he was saying Israel needs to respond. And especially since Iran uh, fired these drones and missiles uh, and rockets from Iran territory, that they need to go exactly uh, and hit Iran territory itself. But we'll see what's going to happen in the next uh, 24, 48 hours. <laughs> All right, George, I'll go to you next here. Uh, we talked last night. Obviously, this is unprecedented uh, situation. And uh, look, everyone's watching, as Chris said, to what the response will be. What's your take here? Yeah, I, I think uh, we were all sort of gearing up for this moment. Uh, the, the, the White House and the intelligence in the state, as well as uh, our Western allies were telecasting that this was going to happen. Many people by surprise 
is the extent of uh, of, uh, of attack the attack by the Iranian regime. Last count was 186 drones, 36 uh, cruise missiles, 110 surface-to-surface -surface, uh, missiles, and the reporting from the IDF is that they managed to intercept 99% uh, percent of those. Again, that's unprecedented. It's the first time that Iran has done so directly from, the Iranian regime has done so directly from their land for quite some time. They've been using these proxies that we've been uh, reporting on extensively on CBN News. Uh, but I think uh, going forward, I, I, I was talking to Chris Mitchell this morning uh, as he woke up and I said, what was the mood uh, mm. in Jerusalem and the sense that people were going about their their normal life. Uh, people were going to uh, to the to sh uh, you know enjoying Shabbat. They were out on the streets. Uh, but I think uh, you know there's a lot of all eyes are on Washington D.C. Uh, Biden is uh, getting together with the G7 leaders to uh, craft a response. Obviously, the Biden administration wants to cool the heels of the Israelis. Tell them to calm down a little bit. Look for a, a diplomatic uh, uh, solution going forward. Uh, clearly, Israel has a different calculus and how they respond. I think the, the good thing is that you know, they weren't uh, any casualties to, to, to speak of that we know of uh, right now. The damage was uh, very minimal. If you think about it, you know, 186 of these Shahed 136 drones, uh, I've seen them up close and personal in, uh, in Ukraine, in the southern part of Ukraine. They do extensive damage. Uh, to infrastructure, water supply, the electrical grid. Uh, clearly, Israel, with the help of the United States, uh, Great Britain, uh, interestingly, Jordan as well, uh, got involved to to shoot down these incoming uh, projectiles. So, so uh, it'll be interesting to see the level of uh, uh, response uh, by Benjamin Netanyahu by Jerusalem uh, in the days, uh, uh, in the hours and days ahead. Chuck, this was uh, an interesting, I mean, obviously unprecedented, as we said, but also interesting because it was clearly telegraphed. Um, and as you were, you, I think you called them on your stream, called them weed eaters in the air, these slow moving uh, buzzards going. And and so we had all, It's it was just weird. You had all this time for to figure out what to do. Uh, our warships were over there because of this advance notice and everything. So, um, so what did you make of that whole strategy and what Iran was hoping to get out of this whole thing? Sure. Well, I, it's about 1,300 miles from uh, Iran to Israel and have to cross, obviously, across Iraq and Jordan or maybe Syria or Saudi Arabia in order to get there. And so uh, we obviously have been watching Iran very closely, and so have the Israelis. And so they picked up the launches as soon as they happened. That gave them literally a few hours. I mean, that's a, the distance similar to be like flying from Vermont to Florida. Uh, and so uh, you think about you know how long it would take a plane to get there. These are a little bit faster than a plane, but not, uh, and, and uh, the, the Shahed drones are much slower than a plane. Uh, these drones, uh, as, as George said, they can create extensive damage, but they are, uh, they're, they're actually more like a large artillery shell with wings uh, because they, they only have a 70 kilogram, I'm sorry, 35 kilogram warhead, which is about 75 pounds. And um, a warhead of that size would like destroy your house, but it's not going to destroy a city block. It might destroy a part of a, an apartment building, but not the, the whole building. Uh, and so they the, the thing about these drones is that they have so many of them and that they can direct them all at specific targets. However, Israel took measures immediately upon notifying, being notified of the launches uh, to scramble the GPS signals within their country, uh, inside of Israel. So if you were anywhere in northern Israel and you pulled up your phone, it would look like your map uh, on your map, you're at the Beirut airport. If you pull, if you're in southern Israel, it would look like you're at the Cairo airport. That obviously made it much more difficult for these Shahed drones to hit their targets. And uh, as uh, is being reported, not one of those drones actually breached Israeli airspace. They were all shot down or landed on their own outside of Israeli airspace. Uh, the only things that made it into Israeli airspace were the the missiles and the rockets that were fired. Uh, and so these, uh, again, I, we, we talk about this amazing response 
to the the attack last night. Uh, first of all, I think it bears pointing out that it wasn't just Iran that attacked last night. Uh, Hezbollah joined in, firing rockets out of Lebanon. Uh, the, the there were rockets fired out of Syria as well. And the Houthis, who can forget the Houthis, kind of like the redheaded stepchild of the axis of evil down there, that uh, is kind of like that really annoying little brother that just won't leave you alone, wants to play, and nobody pays attention to him. But uh, they fired some rockets as well. Um, uh, all of those were dealt with on top of what Iran sent. Of course, uh, Israel has been it, very handily dealing with attacks out of southern Lebanon from the Houthis and from Syria ever since October 7th. Uh, so they've got a lot of practice with that. But this uh, this axis of evil on that side attacking Israel was countered not just by Israel and the United States and the UK, but the Jordanian Air Force rose to the challenge. The Jordanian air defenses were shooting down those drones as well as the Saudis. And that's that instant coalition of people in that region and and countries that aren't have not been uh, very friendly toward Israel at least in their uh, handling of what they're doing in Gaza. Uh, so if Jordan, for example, has been very critical of Israel and what they've been doing in Gaza, but Jordan still rose and defended Israeli uh, against these these attacks from uh, Iran last night. And that is substantial. I mean, that that's notable. We should really uh, take note of that because uh, to have Jordan and Saudi Arabia shooting down drones out of Iran, especially since Iran specifically threatened Jordan, Iraq, and Saudi Arabia and told them, if you do this, if you try to stop us or if you allow Israeli aircraft into your airspace, we will consider you to be an enemy as well and we will attack you. So it remains to be seen what Iran decides to do now that both Jordan and Saudi Arabia rose on the side of Israel in this conflict. And uh, this could definitely widen the conflict without a doubt. All right. If you're just joining us right now, uh, we welcome you into the CBN News channel and the CBN News app, as well as on YouTube. If you'd like to interact with us, go ahead over to the CBN News YouTube channel. We are monitoring the chat. If you guys have questions for uh, Chris and Chuck and George, just feel free to leave them in the chat. We'll try to get to them as best we can. So, Chris, I want to ask just for I mean, a lot of Americans went to bed last night. We had this attack happened overnight there in Israel and then you know people that, that was evening here in the United States people went to bed what what's happened today what is what is the latest that we could fill people in on well last night uh, uh, Dan I was up in the Galilee and I was actually not too far from the Lebanese border up there you can hear planes almost constantly that are going into uh, into South Lebanon and hitting Hezbollah targets uh, came down here and you know during the night, there were several hours of anticipation because uh, the drones were on their way. Everybody, I would say many Israelis, stayed up quite late last night into the early morning hours anticipating this attack. And, uh, and thankfully, as we've noted, 99% of those uh, 300 drones, missiles, and rockets were shot down. Many of them never coming into Israeli airspace. Uh, if you're here today in the streets of Jerusalem, it looks normal. Uh, I'm not sure it's a, it's a sense of normalcy, but it's really uh, not normal because we don't know what's going to be happening uh, pretty soon and uh, what kind of response uh, Israel we, will have. I'll, I'll add to Chuck's comments about the, uh, uh, you know, how they've been able to do that. The Jordanians, the Saudis, uh, and, and really Benny Gantz, uh, the defense minister a few years ago, they really set up a four-tier uh, anti-missile defense system that's worked superbly last night. Not only the Iron Dome, but David Sling, the Arrow 3, uh, just an amazing demonstration of how they were able to protect Israel. And I also say that, uh, you know, Iranian, uh, Iran's taking a little hit in social media. I saw one thing that said these drones that took so long to get here, he said, uh, one of the things said, even Amazon orders arrive <laughs> faster than these drones. Uh, so Iran's getting a little bit of a, a taste of mockery on uh, on social media right now. 
but uh, but not to be taken lightly to what they what potentially they could do uh, in the future or if Hezbollah decides to get into this fray in a major way. But I would say to your question, Dan, it looks normal right now, but everybody's watching to see how Israel will respond, even while it seems the United States is trying to restrain uh, uh, Israel. And when I talked to Ambassador uh, Danone, he he said, you know, the United States, we appreciate their help, but uh, please don't help, don't restrain us from doing what we need to do to protect our country. Yeah, which is what they've been saying, uh, you know, a lot uh, towards the attacks and uh, the response in Gaza saying, hey, ease back here. And we've been talking about that on these streams that uh, perhaps that emboldened Iran to want to take this step when they see that, well, we can go ahead and attack and then everyone's going to yell at Israel after that. George? going to say to Chris's point, I mean, it's really, uh, I mean, Israelis have to be uh, breathing a huge sigh of relief uh, today that uh, all of the assets that uh, Israel has deployed uh, to, 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 to shield itself uh, from a, a moment like this, that they've all sort of anticipated and expected, and it worked beautifully. I mean, 99% interception rate is is huge. Uh, now, obviously, the 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 uh, Iranians. Uh, I think the Iranians expected that that the Israelis, with the help of the United States and Great Britain, uh, would intercept these uh, Shahed drones uh, because of just how long they take. What's interesting, like for example, in Ukraine, uh, the the time frame was much different. Most of the Shahed 136 drones were being launched from Crimea, and it would only take a few minutes uh, to get to their target. In this case, it took several hours. So I think let's 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 not be naive. Let's let's pretty much expect that the Iranian regime expected that the Israelis would manage to shoot down all these 186 drones. That was pretty much a given. I think they were hoping that the surface-to-surface -surface, uh, missiles and the um, uh, and the other uh, you know missiles that they launched would particularly hit uh, the the air base from which. Uh, uh, two weeks ago, Israel launched its attacks against the uh, the, uh, the, the 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 consulate. Uh, in uh, in Damascus, Syria, and apparently it did sustain some damage, nothing uh, of significance. They, according to the IDF, they're up and running. So I think, uh, you know, Iran can walk away saying, well, at least we hit, uh, we, you know, brought some damage to that particular facility. Uh, but again, it's, it, it's a, you know, Israelis are, are breathing a sigh of relief that, uh, that they're various uh, uh, security apparatus, the various missile defense systems that they have and they've been working on for quite some time worked beautifully. I am hearing also initial reporting from inside of Tehran that uh, Iranians are not too, they're not giddy. I'm sure you'll see some video uh, in the hours ahead, uh, be it on Al Jazeera and some of these other uh, uh, networks that play quite uh, uh, well in the in the Middle East. You'll see Iranians, uh, you know, handing out sweets and dancing and so forth. Uh, but uh, what I'm hearing from inside Iran, this is again not something that they want. They do not want to go to war uh, with uh, with Israel. It's the same sentiment that I saw two weeks ago, reporting from inside Hezbollah territory in. South Lebanon. Uh, this is not what they want. Uh, and so it'll be interesting to see what kind of uh, street response, uh, how the street in Iran uh, uh, will will respond to the actions. Keep in mind, you guys know, Chris, Chuck, you guys know you've reported extensively uh, from this part of the world. Uh, you know, uh, you, in order to, re to respond, you've got to respond in a heavy hand. Uh, if you don't, you are considered uh, weak. Uh, and so this, this was something that Iran had to do. It was obviously surprising that they did it directly from their from their territory, but nonetheless, they had to in order to placate the domestic uh, anger uh, that clearly is there amongst a segment of the Iranian population. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, I think we need to be also very clear that uh, that most Iranians are not itching for a war uh, with Israel because they know it will be devastating. All right, so we got the statement here from the White House. Earlier on, as this was unfolding last night, they really issued sort of a vague statement. Uh, I'll read part of it because it's a little bit of a lengthy statement. He says, this is uh, President Biden saying, I've just spoken with Prime Minister Netanyahu to reaffirm America's ironclad commitment to the security of Israel. I told him that Israel demonstrated a remarkable capacity to defend against and defeat even unprecedented attacks sending a clear message to its foes that they cannot effectively threaten the security 
of Israel, and he talked about he's going to convene his fellow G7 leaders to coordinate a united diplomatic response to Iran's brazen attack. And they did; he did kind of insinuate as well that they didn't they didn't want any part of any retaliation. That you know, because we talked, Chris, last night about how uh, Israel said they promised a strong response here, and Biden seemed to indicate they didn't want to be take part in that response. We we saw the threat from you know iran if that did happen uh so w- what do you guys make of that threat chuck well as far as a response goes israel has uh, several dozen uh f-35 uh, dual role combat fighters and these are some of the most advanced uh, combat aircraft on planet earth they could very easily penetrate iranian uh, air defense radar uh take out I- iranian uh, besides anything that they want uh, in there. They, there are about nine different mun- munitions that those things can fire. The real question is how they get to Iran because, uh, again, it's about 1,300 miles uh, that they would have to travel. That is uh, within the range of these fighters. They c- could make it into Iran, but then they would need to refuel in order to get home. And so it might be possible that they... Uh, make it into Iran, drop their munitions, and then turn south and go into the Persian Gulf and would have to refuel. Uh, I, their refueling capability, though, is limited as far as Israel's uh, own refueling capability, and they might need to rely on American refuelers to do that. And uh, from what President Biden just said, if he says, we're not going to have any part in this, then that might be off the table. Uh, so the that we've heard some talk overnight about Israel considering a response with drones of their own. And so it just remains to be seen what they decide to do. The difference will be, I, if I had to predict, uh, that although Iran just aimed all of their munitions at Israel itself and probably hoping to create as many civilian casualties as possible, uh, that the Israelis are going to be a lot more choosy about the targets that they aim at inside Iran, they're going to aim for things that actually have a military value and mm-hmm. uh, or a strategic value like uh, nuclear uh, plants that would allow them to, to advance their nuclear program, things like that. Uh, if, if nothing else, it'd be likely that they would uh, take out the factories that are producing these drones and missiles uh, inside mm-hmm. Iran. Without a doubt, Israel has a long list of targets that they would like to hit inside Iran that they've been watching very closely over some time. And this now gives them an excuse to do it. Guys, I wanted to get this question in here from the audience uh, from from username Boomer. It's a solid username, by the way. But the question is, could some drones uh, may, uh, may be unarmed or used to test different uh, defenses, even to deplete ammunition? So in other words, uh, did they potentially do this just to kind of get Israel to sit there and have to unload all all of these uh, munitions that they have here and maybe deplete them a little bit? What do you guys think of that uh, that question? Absolutely. That's, that's absolutely what they were doing. That's the reason that they fired those in several waves is that they were hoping the first wave would deplete the resources of uh, the Iron Dome, the Aero system, and David Sling and so on. And then the subsequent waves would be able to make it into Israel and actually cause some damage. Uh, but uh, what they, what what we actually saw was that uh, the uh, combat aircraft launched from Israel, the yep. United States, the UK, Jordan, et cetera, et cetera, took out virtually all of those drones before they even made it into Israeli airspace. And then the Iron Dome system was able to take out the cruise missiles, which are much larger. I mean, these cruise missiles are up to three feet in diameter. They're on the order of 10 times as much explosive, and they could do a lot more damage, and they move a lot faster. But without a doubt, uh, Israel's Iron Dome system is able to prioritize uh, and, and see the difference between a slow-moving weed eater in the sky, uh, or you know, as they call them, uh, a flying Dorito, in in Ukraine, um, and, and they're, they're able to tell the difference between those and a forty foot long, three foot in diameter rocket that's coming in from from Iran and take out the more uh, dangerous ones first. In fact, uh, we saw footage last night 
from Jordan, where one of those uh, those uh, missiles was taken out over Jordan and fell in a residential neighborhood just outside of Amman, uh, causing a little bit of damage there. So uh, that it didn't quite work out the way that I think Iran hoped. Chris, George, you guys have any reaction to that? Go ahead, Chris. Okay, yeah, I was. I would add to that. You know, uh, certainly uh, Iran has to be disappointed in and how how re really by penetrating any of Israeli airspace, uh, at least at least with the drones. But I'm sure they're learning from this. And I was in part they wanted to find uh, the defenses of Israel uh, probably much more robust than they expected. But but it's not over. I mean, is Iran is still manufacturing these drones, these ballistic missiles. Uh, but a, an amazing, superb uh, demonstration by Israel and its allies in the region to defend against these. But I think uh, it, Iran's going to still try to penetrate uh, Israel in the future. Yeah, I was. Can you hear me? Yeah, I was going yep, to say, ahead, George. You know, I think uh, you know we were uh, talking last night, uh, Dan. Um, uh, you know, the the concern that uh, even though the Houthis, the uh, the uh, Iranian proxies in Syria and Iraq, and Hezbollah joined in, I think the big concern we had last night uh, was that uh, Hezbollah would go, uh, you know, absolutely unleash all that they have uh, simultaneously to time with these drones coming in. That was the big concern. And obviously Israel is uh, breathing a sigh of relief. Thank goodness Hezbollah did not do that. Uh, and I think that, uh, that, that, that obviously is, is very, very comforting to Israel that Hezbollah did not, even though they fired off a few missiles uh, from, the, from the south, uh, but not to the extent that uh, they could have, and they chose not to uh, to do that. And so I think uh, that's uh, that's terrific. And obviously for for you know again for Iran, they knew that these 186 drones were going to be coming. They knew the United States had assets in the Mediterranean, along with the Brits, the French, uh, you know the Jordanians, the Saudis. Even though they didn't expect them to get involved, uh, but clearly 186 it sounds like a lot. Uh, but uh, Israel has been preparing for this moment for a very, very long time. Uh, and clearly, uh, they, they showed uh, their, uh, their, their class in the process of defending their, uh, their people. All right. And Chris, as you mentioned a few minutes ago that you had caught up with uh, Danny Danone. Uh, so, Crutch, if you're ready, I wanted to play. Uh, we got a clip of that uh, interview, and we can expect to see that full interview on CBN News uh, in a little bit here. But let's, let's take a look at what he had to say. Well, last night we saw our defense system in action. We are very proud of the capabilities, of the results, but it's not enough. We have to show also our offensive capabilities in order to create deterrence in the region against Iran. They attacked a sovereign country uh, with 300 rockets, uh, missiles, and UAVs, and we cannot sit idly by. Uh, so we will have to calculate our next step. And my position is that we have to hit them hard to teach them a lesson that they will not do it again. All right, Chris. So that's that was your conversation there. What what can you uh, tell us about your conversation with him in addition to that uh, clip right there? I'm not hearing uh, Chris, by the way. Got no audio. Is it, is the audio silent on the feed as well? Well, Dan, can I can I chime in? Yeah, I didn't know if everyone else could. I didn't know if it was just me that couldn't hear Chris, but we, Chris, we couldn't hear you there uh, uh, on your response. Go ahead, George. Yeah, no, those are those are strong words from Danny Danone. I mean, it's uh, you know, he's obviously telecasting that the that the Israelis want to have a forceful uh, response. Uh, again, I think uh, what what is going to perhaps uh, limit or hamstring the Israelis. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is is from the White House, right? And and uh, how much will the White House put pressure on Israel to say, listen, you know, we had a 99% success rate with the help of the United States. Uh, you didn't have uh, anybody injured, I mean, uh, killed, no major devastation. Uh, so maybe we need to cool things down. Let's uh, let's talk a diplomatic uh, avenue uh, and not uh, you know do a tit for tat. Uh, and so I think that's what we're going to be anticipating uh, in the next few hours uh, as uh, the, the president meets with the G7. Uh, Chris, are you back online? 
No, he's not. No. I don't know what happened to his audio. We lost Chris's audio here, so uh, unfortunately. But uh, uh, we'll work on getting that back here in just a second, Chris. Uh, but uh, Chuck, George, while we have you guys, I know we're going to wrap here in just a moment. But uh, let's get your final thoughts on where this thing goes from here. What What are your final thoughts on this whole thing uh, to leave people with here as we head into the rest of this weekend and heading and heading forward after this? Go ahead, Chuck. Well, I, I just want to say that last night when we uh, we went live right after this uh, happened, as the rockets and drones were still flying toward Israel. Uh, so before we knew what would actually take place, uh, we had 40,000 people online, I believe. And um, uh, we, we prayed all together, 40,000 people. That's a stadium's worth of people. Uh, and, and we prayed that, that this would happen, that God would spread his wings over Israel that he would stop these drones, that he would allow them uh, to, none of them to penetrate the airspace of Israel and that there would be no damage uh, and no lives destroyed. Uh, and I, I, I think that we have, that we would be remiss not to point out that this is a massive answer to that prayer. Yeah. Uh, and I just hope that uh, people in Israel can see it for what it is, that uh, yes, Israel's got this great technology and yes, they've been preparing for this, but and uh, this is an unprecedented attack from Iran with hundreds and hundreds of rockets. And uh, I, obviously, Iran was not expecting this outcome. Uh, this is a, a real uh, stain on their credibility with uh, everybody else that they're trying to sell these drones to. And so uh, this, uh, we, as we've prayed that God would thwart the plans of evil men, he came through last night and he answered our prayer. And that's a very significant thing that I think we can't forget. We also need to continue to pray as this goes on for wisdom for the leaders of Israel and that God would continue to stand by his people throughout this conflict. Amen. Uh, George? Yeah, that's excellent, Chuck. I think, I, you know, I think from having reported from inside Iran many years ago, uh, I think uh, Iran had no choice uh, but to respond and to respond in a way that would, uh, I think, for domestic purposes, uh, placate the fact that they, that they, you know, that you, when you move these drones around, when you position your surface-to-surface -surface, uh, 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 missiles and other missile technology, you better believe the United States and our allies in the region are watching every inch of uh, of uh, of Iran. So we knew it. We the, the Biden administration had been telecasting this, just like they were preparing the world for the invasion of Russia, of, uh, of Ukraine back in 2023. We all knew it was coming. So there was a lot of time for preparation. I would like to hope that uh, this was uh, Israel's way to, uh, uh, Iran's way to say uh, to the local uh, 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 population. Hey, Jonathan, that they can't. Responded, uh, we hit this case. Uh, and that's done, and we're you know we're finished with our operation, and we can move on, and let's let's uh, let's keep going. I'm hoping this is the case, and that this is not some kind of a, a ratcheting up of uh, of the tensions in the region. And I hope that what happened last night, uh, based on what we saw and the incredible uh, uh, ability of Israel to defend itself, that uh, that this was again Iran's way of saying we needed to respond. Uh, in order to, um, you know, subdue the the, the, the local population uh, and say that this was our, our return, our revenge for what they did to us in, in Damascus. I'm hoping and praying that this is it. Yeah, absolutely. And Chris, I think we might have your audio back now, okay. so I wanted to give it another shot. Do we or do we not? I heard you for a second there. I hope we do. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. We can hear you now. Good. <laughs> I just wanted to add both to uh, Chuck and George, you know, and as Chuck mentioned, having 40,000 people about a stadium size uh, prayer group uh, asking for God's protection. Uh, we prayed later uh, with another maybe 40,000 or more. Uh, and, and I think prayers make a difference. In fact, uh, Ambassador Danone mentioned that in our interview, how, uh, how important it was for people to pray. And I think in not taking anything away from the four-tier technological anti-missile system, which is state-of-the-art. It's just uh, an incredible uh, development. However, there's a spiritual Iron Dome as well, and not to underestimate the power of prayer and how God protected Israel last night. 
Yeah, uh, it's just the latest in the chapter, guys. I mean, we've seen it. You, you all obviously have reported on it many times. The history of Israel, recent history here, and just the protection that oftentimes defies logical, worldly, earthly explanation and how this place is still standing after all this. It leaves you kind of scratching your head saying, well, I, there really, what other possible explanation could there be for this? So guys, I appreciate all your insights today. Why don't we close this thing out in prayer? Uh, I'll, I'll kick it off. Anybody else wants to chime in? Great. And then, uh, and then we can close it up. So uh, let me do that. And, and I also thank you all for being here on the stream with us, 20,000 of you. It's fantastic. Uh, but I hope you all after this stream can get yourselves to church and and get yourselves to worship the Lord. So let's go before him on this stream and and uh, and mm -hmm. pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you again for your sovereignty, for your your goodness, your grace, and your mercy on us. And we just thank you for all the times that you make yourself known to uh, your creation and to your people. So uh, we're thankful for all the ways you work through us and in us. And, um, and we pray, Lord, that in the midst of this situation that... Uh, your name would be made great. That's the continual prayer that we have, that people would be drawn to you, that ultimately souls would be saved. And so we lift up that request some more in your name, Jesus. Mm. Lord God, Father, uh, I also... you promise in your word that you, you have not given us a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you've given us a spirit of like, sonship it now. by which we cry, Abba, Father. And I just pray that more people inside Israel and out listening to this this video stream right now would do just that today, would cry out, Abba, Father, and would be heard by you, and you would save them and be their God. We thank you for your promises to Israel, and through Israel, your promises to the whole world. We thank you for your promise that Israel will not be destroyed, that we can be confident in you. And I just mm -hmm. pray against the spirit fear, Lord. I, I pray against that spirit uh, that that people can get so worried about events that are happening around the world. We know that you are in control. We trust you. And we know, because we know your heart, because we know who you are, uh, you've given us a spirit of power and love and self-control. And so I pray that we would display that today and that people would see that peace that we have going forward and they would want what we have in Jesus' name. Father, we also rejoice at what happened last night. We thank you for that. And we pray right now for wisdom for Israel's military and political leaders, what to do. Uh, they need wisdom from above. And so we just pray for that wisdom. And we pray that you would continue to watch over Israel. And Father, we pray for each and every one watching and listening right now. Uh, you said in your word, Jesus, that uh, when these things happen, to lift up for your redemption draweth nigh. So Lord, we pray for that grace to keep us fixed on you. You're the author and the finisher of our faith and put our help us all put our trust in you, in Jesus' name. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And I pray for that spirit of freedom uh, to canvas uh, that in the midst of this very challenging moment uh, that uh, people would rise up uh, who not just politically but also spiritually and be able to put their trust in you father thank you for the hedge of protection over the nation of israel last night uh, clearly your hand was uh, was evident uh, and uh, lord you protected uh, the people you protected the entire country in an incredible way and we thank you for that lord we just pray that there's a convulsion we've been reporting on it for quite some time there's a convulsion a spiritual that's taking place across the uh, across the Middle East, Lord, from the desert sands of uh, Casablanca all the way to Kabul, Afghanistan, uh, Lord. There's just this yearning for freedom. And Lord, when these countries with their dictatorial regimes decide to do things that bring so much pain uh, to innocent people, to the civilian population, uh, Lord, there uh, tends to be just this uh, agony and this yearning for freedom, for this yearning for peace. And I pray that, uh, Lord, today in Iran, that you would continue to move powerfully like you are uh, in Iran, uh, and that uh, more and more people will continue to see dreams and visions of you, Lord. And even with leadership mm -hmm. in Iran or Hezbollah or, or Hamas, Lord, we just know nobody is out of the reach of your love and your grace. And we pray for that today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
All right, gentlemen, thank you so much. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate you all watching. And if you haven't subscribed to CBN on YouTube and all the other channels, go ahead and do that now. Uh, we greatly value and appreciate the fact that you are with us and you're praying with us and you're supporting us, keeping George and Chuck and Chris out in the field doing their reporting, these great reports and this information that you get can't be done without your help. So we're so thankful for uh, each of you uh, walking alongside of us and supporting us in this uh, effort to bring uh, news from a Christian perspective around the globe. So appreciate you all. Go enjoy the Lord's Day. Chris, stay safe there in Israel. Chuck, George, thanks so much for being here. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. All right. God bless everyone. Take care. Okay, well, wow, those were great messages. Um, I'm not sure where Pastor is, uh, but but what a um, <clears throat> I love the confidence that these believers and and Amir Safardi, which is through all of this, um, he has held such confidence in God, and I love to see that. I love to hear that, and um, and. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your hand of protection over them. And I look so forward to see all of the um, miraculous things God will be doing in this whole situation. It's wonderful. And so now, um, let's say uh, we'll move on to communion. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I'm still with you here a little bit, but uh, okay. not for long. I, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. All right, you know, it's it's very, very interesting to see this all play out. And it's like Amir, uh, along with the IDF, the Israel Israelis Defense Force, already know what Iran's doing, why they're doing it. And, and, and now they're sitting there looking, saying, uh, what is the right way to move here? Because Israel's actually been looking for this opportunity for you for a long time and everybody wants israel to be pro-peace uh because they know they, they know from seven thousand years of recorded history and the word of god that when god moves ain't no man left standing and they know that they're wrong and god is protecting them so father we we speak over israel today our faith we declare along with every other uh, believer who has prayed a prayer in the last 24 hours, in the name of Jesus, he that keepeth Israel will neither sleep nor slumber. And we call everyone, Jew or Gentile, in that Israel Middle East region, to come to Jesus now. Come to Jesus. Ramadan's just now over. So the Muslims have been fasting. And in Jesus' name, may millions of them find you, God our Father. May they see and meet Jesus, the man in the white robe, and come to know you now. We speak it again over all the illegals that are here and have come to create trouble. He that keeps Israel keeps us. Don't mess with us. We didn't do anything wrong to you. And uh, you're here Ill illegally. And so the judgment of God is on you. And we decree in Jesus' mighty name, you're in the United States of America. You may as well become a born-again, spirit-filled believer and know our God, the one true God the one true God. And now, not only are you the children of Abraham uh, by natural birth, but now you would get to be the children, the sons and daughters of Abraham by faith. 
We call it done right now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Amen. Well, Sister Leanne's going to lead us in uh, communion. And uh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, love, for being there. Thank you all for being with us. Don't know who all is with us, but we call you blessed in Jesus' mighty name. And I'll let you take it away from there, love. All right. So I'm first going to put up, if everybody doesn't have your communion elements yet, this is a good time to go grab them. I'm going to read the verses out of the Bible that pertain to communion. I'll actually put them up on the screen right here, right now, so that we can read them together. And then after that, we will pray a prayer of salvation for anyone that has not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. This is the time to make that decision. Your life will change in such wonderful ways. Things that have been confusing will become clear. You'll have a peace that you've not known before. A relationship with God is, is the ultimate of anything on this earth. You cannot go wrong with making that decision, but everything can go wrong without it. So please consider making that decision here today. We'll pray a prayer of salvation with you so you can receive him as your Lord and Savior. Your life does not have to be in order. You don't have to have the Bible memorized. You make the decision and then God will help walk you through your new relationship with him from there. It's a learning process, a lifelong learning process for all of us. And we welcome you to make that decision and, and start this journey with us. So here we go. The communion verses out of the Bible are from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. And then 1 John chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. So the, the verses warning us in there are just warning us to not flippantly just um, eat a cracker and drink some um, grape juice 
without realizing the purpose of what we're doing. This is us receiving the body and blood of the Lord Jesus. And we need to be mindful of why we're doing that and remembering everything that he suffered for us. And as long as you're always mindful to do that, there is no fear in taking communion. It's the it's one of the most wonderful things you can do in your life. It brings healing. It brings cleansing. You're again receiving Jesus and remembering everything he did for you. That's the purpose of communion is that communion between Jesus and you. It's it's a beautiful thing. So now I'm going to put up the prayer of salvation and we welcome you to read this prayer. Say this prayer from the very depths of your heart, receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And even those who have said this prayer a hundred times before, feel free to um, pray it again. It's a wonderful refreshing to your spirit. It's a rededication to Jesus, a remembrance for us. So here we go. <clears throat> going to share, whoops, share the screen again. As soon as I find that right page on here, I know it's in here someplace. There it is. Our prayer of salvation. Pray this out loud. I thank you, God, my father, that in the fullness of time, you sent the fullness of Jesus to redeem my life by his blood from destruction. Thank you, Jesus, for giving yourself for me so that I can be made complete in you every day. According to John 3, 16, I choose to believe you are the only begotten son of God and that you died for me and rose again on the third day. Now reach out your hands to Jesus and say, I receive you, Jesus, into my life and make you my Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. I receive all of your grace and mercy, all of your love and righteousness, filling every part of my life with all the fullness of God. Thank you that none of my sins are imputed against me. I am now a new creation in Christ Jesus. Fill me and baptize me with the Holy Spirit and fire so that I live in power, understand the word of God, pray in my heavenly language and live a successful life as a believer every day. Surround me with godly people who will help me know how to walk with you every day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. So if you just prayed that prayer for the first time, we welcome you to the family of God. We know what a wonderful decision this just was for your life and what an amazing difference it's going to make in your life. If you have any questions or just to get a hold of us to let us know you've made this decision, please contact us. Our contact information is in the notes um, in the YouTube programs at the end of every program. And um, we, you can also go to SamuelJCottle.com. That's our Community of Faith webpage. And there's some information there, too. And we'd love to have you get a hold of us. If you have any questions about anything, people contact us wanting to know what communion is about. Um, we're glad to answer any of those questions that you have. So please let us help you and join us whenever you can. We're here every day of the week. We have this wonderful group of um, believers with us. We call the Community of Faith family. Um, they've been with us for a very long time. They're a wonderful support group for each other. And we'd love to have you with us anytime you can join us. And our schedule is also in that information in the um notes in the YouTube program. So please contact us. And also now you're free to receive communion with us. And what a wonderful thing that is too. And you can receive communion as often as you like. Jesus tells us as often as you do this, just do it in remembrance of me.
So it's a wonderful thing to partake in. So now I'm going to put up the, um, we'll pray over our elements first, and then I'm going to put up the prayers over the bread. We'll, we'll pray that prayer together and, um, and then receive the bread and then we'll pray over the juice and receive that as well. So lift up your elements. Father, we thank you again for another time to come before you and honor everything you've done for us. We thank you, Father, for this time and the ability to do this. And we thank you for these communion elements and we bless them and sanctify them for this time of communion with you, Lord. Now I'm going to share the screen again. And let's pray over the bread together. Here we go. Jesus, as you instructed your disciples, I receive these elements today. This bread representing your broken body and this juice representing your blood poured out for me. I do this in remembrance of you and all you did for me. Jesus, you were wounded for my transgression. You were bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement for my peace is on you, Lord. And by your stripes, I am healed. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body, in my mind, in my will, and in my emotions, there is nothing missing and nothing broken. All trauma is removed from my life now. Every joint is supplying in my body from your broken body, Jesus in the body of Christ, in my community, and around the world, wherever you send me or this prayer. I receive the bread, your body, broken now, in Jesus' name, amen. And now let's receive the bread together. We thank you, Jesus, for your body broken for us, for everything that you suffered to save us. We thank you, Lord. And now lift up the juice and let's pray. Now I bless this fruit of the vine in obedience to your word, in remembrance of your blood shed to provide redemption's price and righteousness for me. By your blood, Jesus, I have been redeemed. By your blood, Jesus, I have reconciliation with God, my Father. By your blood, Jesus, every sin has been placed in remission in my life. I am a new creation, recreated in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away, and now all things are made new. By the blood of Jesus, I come boldly to the throne room of grace, where I find mercy, grace, and help for my assignment, my dominion mandate on this earth. By your blood, Jesus, and by the word of my testimony, the accuser of the brethren is cast down forever, and there is no condemnation in my life. By your blood, Jesus, every plague must pass over and cannot be on me or my family. By your blood, Jesus, my conscience is purged, my robes are made white, and I will always be the glorious church without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish when you come for me. 
I receive the fruit of the vine now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And now let's receive the juice together. And we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your cleansing, healing, life-giving blood. Thank you, Lord. And now I see Sister Phyllis is with us. Are you available to read verses for us? Hold on. All right. Okay, I am unmuted. All right. Can you okay, read Ephesians he... 1, 15 to 23 for us? I love that prayer. Okay. Uh, I had it just a moment ago. <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, I'm sure it's still there. Uh, here, okay. <laughs> I'm sure it's still there. <laughs> hmm. yeah. All right. Um, now, this. This is um, verse 14 through 21? Yes. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, Ephesians 1. Let's do 15 to 23. Okay. All right. Good. Good. Uh, that, that's your favorite, huh? <laughs> it is. It is. I love that. Okay. Part. I, I love it also. Okay. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling which are, uh, what are the riches of uh, uh, his glory, uh, of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the uh, exceeding greatness of the power toward us, of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, that only in this age, not, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come, and uh, he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head of all things to the church. Um, all things to the church, which is his, both the, uh, the fullness of him uh, who fills all and all. Amen. Amen. And now Revelations 1, 5 to 7. Oh, or eight. Yeah. I know you like to read 8 too. So go ahead. Yes, I do. I do. That, that's, that's kind of magical to me. Uh, all right. Uh, so that's Revelation 1, 5 through 8. All right. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler over the uh, kings of the earth uh, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. And verse 8, I am the Alpha and the Omega. 
the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Ah, that's just such beautiful, so uh, precious to my spirit. Thank you for letting me read it. You're welcome. Thank you for reading for us. And thank you all for being with us. Remember to keep Israel in your prayers. Be delighted, though. This is, We have such great expectation of what God is going to do in this to prove himself to everyone. Infallible proofs that no one will be able to deny our, our, our God and Father. And so we're excited about that. So... Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll be back tomorrow morning for prayer time, um, 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock Central, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Hope you can join us. Um, what else was I going to mention? Um, I understand I haven't had a chance to go in and look. Um, yesterday we were at the, as Pastor said at the beginning of the program, I forgot he mentioned that already. We were at the the call to the capitals um, for, we were here in North Dakota, but all 50 um, states joined in Washington or joined with Washington, D.C., where they were also meeting to um, turn our nation back to God and to protect our children. And I haven't had a chance. I know Sister Gwen had said yesterday that Michigan, she thought I had a pretty good turnout. So that's awesome to hear. And um, I'll be anxious to see how all of the other ones were. But we'll talk more about that tomorrow morning. So have a wonderful rest of your day. And remember, we love you and God loves you. God Jesus loves you. Lord. And Jesus is Lord. And, you know, just know God loves you so much. He desires more than anything to be part of your life, to help bring mm -hmm. answers that you seek, the peace that you seek. He loves you so much. All you have to do is open your heart to him. So Amen. do that today. So here we go. Have a wonderful day, everyone. We love you.